Beautiful to see you. Well, it's been a while. It's been a while for me since I was here. <laughs> okay. And you just settle in and invite Holy Spirit. Just allow yourself to release your morning, your day, your thoughts, your judgments. Holy Spirit has spoken to me about judgments this morning. The idea that we're capable of judgment is, is the problem. What if we realize we cannot judge? We don't know how to judge rightly. All fear would go away. And we don't have to organize the present moment. We don't have to understand it and put our label on it. Now we can just relax into this moment. And there is no effort in releasing thoughts and the beliefs. It's just a letting go. Allowing it to go. And we have this very, very helpful lesson today. Lesson 314. I seek a future different from the past. From new perception of the world, there comes a future very different from the past. Releasing judgment gives us a new perception. The future now is recognized as but an extension of the present. Past mistakes can cast no shadows on it so that fear has lost its idols and its images and being formless it has no effects. Death will not claim the future now, for life is now its goal, and all the needed means are happily provided. Death will not claim the future now. This is so beautiful. Any heaviness, any Dark feeling is the belief in death. It comes from past idols and images. Who can grieve or suffer when the present has been freed, extending its security and peace into a quiet future filled with joy? And so we pray now. Father, we were mistaken in the past and choose to use the present to be free. Now do we leave the future in your hands, leaving behind our past mistakes, ensure that you will keep your present promises and guide the future in their holy light. And we can allow our mind to get so still. To be open to the holy light of the present. So gentle.
There is no worry. Nothing to be anxious about. We can be so committed to this light of the present. So all that we see. You have no idea of the tremendous release and deep peace that comes from meeting yourself and your brothers totally without judgment. A tremendous release and deep peace that comes from meeting yourself and your brothers and sisters completely without judgment. That's without the self-concept, without righteousness or control without fear. Just peacefully in the open mind. When we look at the mind, we can see that judging takes some effort. It takes a train of thoughts. And when we hop off the train of thoughts, we can't judge. This just takes a decision, just the willingness to not follow it. Instead, let the Holy Spirit fill our minds. Forgiveness keeps being the way to happiness. Just to realize how loved you are. If 
You realize how loved you are. You will be peaceful and loving. You won't have a need to judge or order life. You will be a happy observer, allowing things to be as they are. And maybe to change things that you're called to change. Take those steps. If they're obvious, if you know it, but maybe have denied it. Just do it. Yeah, this decision to judge is what we can gently let go of. It's a choice in the mind. It's a choice to be separate. Jesus puts it this way. The choice to judge rather than to know is the cause of the loss of peace. The choice to judge rather than to know is the cause of the loss of peace. So when we stay in the knowing, we rest in that, in the all-knowing. There is no need to judge. Judgment is the process on which perception but not knowledge rests. Judgment is the process on which perception rests. Judgment is a process, it's a devious decision, we could say, in the mind. Which leads to perception, which leads to the projected universe. That's why we want to follow these steps to get so still and so free. What a gift Course in Miracles is to show us the way Jesus is showing us the steps. We're not totally oblivious anymore. In the sleeping state, we were oblivious. We were judges. We bought in to the illusion. We were not totally oblivious anymore. We can be very conscious and release the need to judge. Or the need to be right about anything. So he brings in evaluation. Evaluation is an obvious prerequisite to judgment. Thinking we have to know or understand or evaluate or order. 
judgment always involves rejection. What has been perceived and rejected or judged and found wanting remains in your mind because it has been perceived. So there is some kind of evaluation going on. I want this or I don't want this. Both involve rejection. One of the illusions from which you suffer is the belief that what you judged against has no effect. This cannot be true unless you also believe that what you judged against does not exist. You evidently do not believe this or you would not have judged against it. In the end, it doesn't matter whether your judgment is right or wrong. Either way, you're placing your belief in the unreal. This is a beautiful explanation. The belief that what you judged against has no effects. That is, that's kind of an insane belief. Like if you judge someone as unworthy or wrong, and you believe that has no effect on you, he's pointing that out. You know, that would only make sense if you believe what you judged against doesn't exist but you don't believe it doesn't exist because otherwise you wouldn't have judged it. But this is how you hurt yourself with your own judgment that is directed seemingly outward. It's nice when we get this. Some people are very defensive or very victim-based, thinking all the time they're a victim to the universe. There's so much anger then. Because it does have effect to judge. Inexperience is not a good experience. We feel cut off from the one we judge. We feel maybe lonely separated, we definitely do not feel love. There's an easy equation when we start to get it. The non-judgment is the only way to peace of mind. But it is a gentle process of releasing beliefs, blocks. So he said that in the end, it doesn't matter whether your judgment is right or wrong. Either way, you're placing your belief in the unreal. This cannot be avoided in any type of judgment because it implies the belief that reality is yours to select from. It is deep. Reality is abstract, is beyond this world, it's beyond specifics. The problem of judgment is that it makes the world seem real. You pick from reality, from this peaceful state of everything being one. Picking, picking from reality. makes judgment real. Misuses the power of the mind. It is definitely based in fear. Fear of being separated from God. From the one. From self. Crazy. Sometimes somewhere Jesus says something about if you look at your life, you, you will surely see you know, how poor your judgment was or <laughs> like, what you have done to hurt yourself. Mm. 
Yes. That's why the genuine desire to release it all is trustworthy. Allow it. Be genuinely happy if you want to release it all. <laughs> you don't want to cling to a certain life or form. It's a beautiful desire to be free. Give it all to spirit to use. It's the specifics we made, we hate. We think it limits us. Limits our freedom. Sometimes we think they are good and sometimes bad. And that is this problem of judgment. So we want to give over the good and the bad. I do not know what it is. I do not know how to use it. I don't want to grip onto it. I don't want to grasp for anything. I want to trust. You have no idea of the tremendous release and deep peace that comes from meeting yourself and your brothers totally without judgment. Start with yourself. Meet yourself totally without judgment. And from there, you can meet anyone without judgment. Practice for one day. Today I'm not going to judge anything that occurs. This is one of the lessons. And you will become aware of how often the mind wants to judge. Wants to think we know something. And this is what he says. You are very fearful of everything you have perceived but have refused to accept. You are very fearful of everything you have perceived but refused to accept. You believe that because you have refused to accept it, you have lost control over it. This is why you see it in nightmares or in pleasant disguises in what seem to be your happier dreams. Nothing that you have refused to accept can be brought into awareness. It is not dangerous in itself, but you have made it seem dangerous to you. How beautiful. So here he even explains nightmares and pleasant disguises, things we like or think we love. It's because we believe that we refuse to accept that we lost control over it. You refuse to accept what you judge. And then I've lost control over it. So acceptance is freedom. The ego says, Non-acceptance is freedom. The ego says control is freedom. If I have control, I'm free. Just cut yourself off from reality. When you feel tired, it's because you have judged yourself as capable of being tired. When you laugh at someone, it's because you have judged him as unworthy. When, when you laugh at yourself, you must laugh at others, if, if only because you cannot tolerate the idea of being more unworthy than they are. So people do laugh at themselves in a judgmental way. Oh, I'm so silly, or I'm so, I'll make all these mistakes. Or, and he says, if you do that, you, 
you also laugh at others because you cannot tolerate that you're more unworthy than them. It's just this ego energy, <laughs> ego perception of yourself and others. It's this big, gentle invitation to let it go. How about you love yourself? Accept and forgive. Forgive the places you want to judge. When you see that you look at yourself with unworthiness, sit with that for a moment. Let spirit in. Let the light in to clear the self-judgment. He says, you know, holiness created you holy. We can ask for that experience. How is it to experience my full holiness? Holiness is my identity, my capital S self. It's very precious, very lovely. Of course, very beautiful, powerful, and wise. And it wants to come through. It is the only reality. We can just lay aside all little judgments. A poor. Spirit is giving me the word poor. It's a poor way of seeing. We were poorly taught by the ego. Very poorly. You're not really capable of being tired, but you're very capable of wearing yourself. The strain of constant judgment is virtually intolerable. It's tiring to have constant judgment. The strain of constant judgment is intolerable. So you get tired. This is why it says, watch your mind. Watch your mind is a fun project. <laughs> the ego is resistant to it. Just watch your thoughts, become conscious of them. Then you will see you don't want them. You want to let them go. It's just not watching. He's saying you're, you're too uh, tolerant of mind wandering. You can give yourself the gift of constant watching the mind, the thoughts. You will release the ones that are not worthy of you, not worthy of your peace of mind and your brother's holiness. You will naturally just release them when you watch them. It's the not watching makes you feel tired, judgmental, And like a victim. He says, be very aware of the tendency to perceive yourself unfairly treated. Be 
become conscious of that. You're not unfairly treated. You're loved. If you notice this thought, I'm a victim to something, question it, say, I, I am loved. <laughs> I am so loved. This is some misperception, mistaken idea coming from the past. We need to release that past, that fixation on the past. It does not shape you now. It has no power. I seek a future different from the past. I'm not a slave to past traumas. Truly, spirit's light will undo all past trauma consequences. They have no consequences. Yeah, so this constant judgment, he's saying it's curious that an ability so de debilitating would be so deeply cherished. <laughs> See a smile there, Jesus is like strange. You will also regard yours, you would also regard judgment with fear, believing that it will someday be used against you. So yeah, this is, you know, the belief that it has no consequence or effect. To judge someone else, you know, it, 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 you know, that belief that it will be used against you. The ego is defensive and wants to judge, and then it is. It's a kind of an unconscious fear that it's going to be used against you. So then it's a constant strain and constant defense. Maybe it can be felt in the body even, the strain in the body, the strain in the mind. But yeah, this belief that it will be used against you can exist only to the extent that you believe in the efficacy of judgment as a weapon of defense for your own authority. So the, the judgment is like a weapon of defense for your own authority, the little I that made up such a universe, such a good, perfect or imperfect little dream. So we invite the authority of God. <laughs> I was authored by God. God created me. I am God's child. I am a creation. That thought, that experience will replace this idea of your own authority. And it's beautiful. You have no guilt and no shame in that state. Nothing like that whatsoever. I am as God created me. Like let that idea be your experience. Be authored by God. I could not make reality. Surrender. It's humble and it is powerful. What would you not accept if you could see your brothers and yourself without judgment? And it's an equality. It's like a pure equality of a, an experience of oneness. It has no persons, no one that you like or dislike. 
no one that you hate or love because it's not about persons presence not persons and there can be no fear because with form there is fear if you think you love a form or hate a form you'll be afraid because you have judged you have judged form as real put it out there your own form or another form so we need to keep it light you know keep your own the symbol of yourself let spirit use it your name your person your body your home let spirit use it but keep it really light don't identify with it if spirit uses the person it is very light and you will identify as spirit not as the person I took down a quote I heard from David once. It's wear the symbols lightly, like a soft silk tunic. It is so light you can light you can hardly feel it touch your skin. <laughs> wear the symbols lightly. Don't identify with them. Because otherwise there will be defensiveness. If you identify with the symbol of you, it's the person, your name, Lori, Matthew, Dirk, Jenny. If we if we defend it, there will be guilt, there will be harm, okay? an experience of harm, an experience of separation and loneliness. We can give those over. Spirit, you use, you use this symbol. That's the only usefulness of the body. Let spirit use it. That's the only way to feel content. All real pleasure, all true pleasure comes from doing God's will. All real pleasure. We have attached pleasure to bodily experiences, sexuality, or tasting something delicious in your tongue, <laughs> you know, but that's not real pleasure. Let's ask for the real pleasure. What is that like? It's the I am, I allow God's will to flow through. What a prayer. I allow God's will to flow through. I want real pleasure. <laughs> Beautiful. And it is gentle. The steps are very gentle. I spent guess I spent 18 years <clears throat> in community and I see how gentle the steps are it's definitely an undoing there are so many layers of belief and we can accept those gentle steps so we have been so mistaken about our identity oh the layers are thick but the undoing can be quick if we wanted to. We are ready. It can be very quick. And if you work on one issue or one layer, actually 10 more layers can fall away at the same time. That's how it can feel. It's the saving time, it's the undoing time. Jesus describes that forgiveness can save you thousands of years when you truly want to go for it. So yeah, being together is a very helpful step. Being together like we are now here, this is 
a very helpful community experience in these satsangs or together in a retreat or together in living, living in community. And if you want a real quick path, come to community. Because <laughs> <laughs> the ego cannot hide very easily. There is so much support, whether you're in physically here in community or in an extended community, you know, it's, it's perfect set up for the undoing. You're not outside, <laughs> don't see yourself as outside. But yeah, if anyone desires living together with a group that are very sincere, can, you can contact us, we can talk about it. You're ready. No doubt. I never planned on living in community. I thought it was a scary thought. I thought of it as a teenager when I was young. I thought, how would it be to live together? with people and have no hiding place. And that was such a scary thought. And even as I took my steps, steps spiritually, I didn't seek community. I didn't know. It wasn't in my mind. I was seeking helpful ways of undoing the ego, such as meditation. I was given, uh, I was I got in touch with David, I was feeling so bright and powerful in my mind as a connection I was just guided there there was no effort I was guided there but even as I came there there wasn't an experience of community I didn't he didn't really have a community we were just coming together a few of us but then the community seemed to happen and maybe it was helpful that way for my mind because I wouldn't have chosen community <laughs> but it doesn't matter whatever way it comes in this undoing of the small self the path is individualized The course is self-study course, and the path is an individualized curriculum. It's like handmade for you. Your path is handmade for you. He says, don't take another another's path as your own. Like some people seek a lot in spiritual circles, like different spiritual paths. And they may never feel like they go much deeper because they try to take another's path as their own. I felt about the course, it's, it's a path that is solid. It's given to me. I take it. <laughs> I was seeking a bit in yoga, meditation, and it was... It's been helpful somehow, but yeah, but it's not my path. <laughs> Relationships is the path of the Course in Miracles. Healing through relationships, forgiveness through relationships, undoing, undoing the pride and the judgment. in the mirror of other people, seeing what you believe, what you projected out there. Yeah, this line keeps ringing in my mind. Is, you have no idea of the tremendous release and deep peace that comes from meeting yourself and your brothers totally without judgment. 
deep peace and tremendous release and love can include with pure so much love. And we need to start to look beyond form, look, overlook form, see it as thoughts. People are thoughts. The way you see people are just your thoughts. And you can't really go to your projection and, and think they can help you with something or you can't go to your projection and try to change it. You need to see it as your projection. Be willing to give it over. So yeah, it's a helpful step to see the world as a world of thoughts. It's been nice to have David here in Spain for a while. It was a nice thought. <laughs> Powerful thought of light. When you forgive someone, you really join their mind. When you truly forgive someone, there is no separation between you and them. And it is a mind thing. It is not an interpersonal thing ever. Does anyone have any thoughts you would like to share? Or express or ask a question? Matthew? Hello. Hello there. Hey. Hey. Yeah, I felt just to just to express. Um a little bit of fear coming up but I notice when my my skin flares up which it did last night flared up a lot and it was scratching and it's really red this morning I don't know if it's very noticeable here but but I, I have a tendency I want to hide I don't really want to be seen and I felt a lot of that during the retreat as well with David and the big group here some of the days you know, there was a bit of a flare up and I felt so, well, at some stages I was very self-conscious and I didn't want to be seen and pictures were being taken and I didn't want to be in pictures. So um, I just felt the prompt to express this now because I just want to accept this part of myself and not, not try and hide it and not be ashamed of it because it is something I experience. And yeah, I don't want any conflict within myself around it. So um, yeah, I just wanted to, to show up here and express that. Beautiful. <laughs> it feels so good yeah. to not leave any corner un unseen. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And not hide any part of myself because this is a, a part of myself. You know what I mean? has been for a few years you know. um, mm -hmm. so yeah just want to fully accept myself exactly as I am mm -hmm. it's beautiful um, yeah, thank you thank you Matthew okay. I'm going to play a song for you if I get if I get the title it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it not all things be exactly as they are. Mm -hmm. No, really, but no. that's that's not a good one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's one room. No part of me, no part of you. Mm. It's a beautiful song. Okay. Thank you. Love you. You can leave it there for Solvay. <laughs> Take the chair. Um, 
Um, yeah, I, I just feel like um, sharing an experience early this morning after you asked me yesterday about the, the asthma spray, if I could picture not needing it, like right by my side all my life. <laughs> And uh, I could see the, the fear coming up. And then I had um, I had a dream uh, where I was, there was a policeman or something deliberately seeking to meet a murderer. And when they met, he didn't even try to capture the murderer or defend himself. He was just standing there looking at that murderer doing absolutely nothing, totally defenseless. And then when I woke up um, from that dream, <laughs> I, um, I had Lulu was sleeping in my bed and she kind of, you know, when I wake up, so she came from my feet end up and she licked my face, licked my eyelid and then she lay right in my <laughs> face. <laughs> and I realized I've been, you know, I've had a lot of healing with her around my asthma and the energy. And I realized I, I still avoid her right in my face. <laughs> That's too much. That's just too much. And I was just, she was literally, <laughs> and she just started purring and she did not move. And I was like, <laughs> I could I could see how I wanted to get away. I wanted to move away, and, and I thought, okay, I I just decided to stay, and I could I could feel you know the asthma coming, difficult breathing, everything came, and then suddenly I was like, oh, I could feel how soft she was, so soft to fur, and I thought, this is insane that that should be so. Um, that that should be a threat to me. That was absolutely insane. And then I just I just stayed there and I kind of allowed it. And um, and then suddenly I started breathing normally again. Wow! So it's just and, and she she stayed there a little while. And then when I was really just able to breathe again. She got up and moved again. <laughs> <laughs> she knows how to be truly helpful. <laughs> oh, that's so so yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was quite an experience. Mm. Also, see the fear thoughts and yeah, and all my judgment and projections and this fur, you know, <laughs> that it should be so terrible and so mm. dangerous. Mm me to this body well, that's beautiful you questioned a tiny mad idea a tiny mad belief <laughs> i did yeah I did. My, my first thought was my medicine <laughs> right next to the bed <laughs> I thought, okay maybe i can try something else mm. yeah. yeah you questioned that paul's cause and effect relationship that the ego made up yeah mm. Yeah, see how I'm saying this, that I should be threatened on my life, on this body's life. Mm -hmm. Something so ridiculously, like, just some fur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very soft fur. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's very beautiful how we can, how spirit helps us to undo these, these strong beliefs. Yeah. At that time, I was guided to eat a cookie that had been in the same bag as the cat food. My spirit <laughs> told me, eat it. And I'm like, no, that, you know, I don't want to eat the products that are in cat food, you know. No, eat it. And I did. And, you know, it was, it was beautiful. It was not an issue. <laughs> but it's all these false cause and effects that we yeah. have made up. Public bathrooms, you know, believing in germs or, you know, so many different beliefs that can be so limiting. Yeah. Okay, question. Yeah. Thank you. 
thank you. Thank you for sharing about the little miracle worker. Sweet. Okay. Peter. Hi. Hi. I felt very inspired by your teaching. Mm -hmm. But right at the end, I just had the thought, just, just overwhelming, it's just too, too much. Why is it too much? It's just the, like the quantity of it all. Or, um, it just felt very dark. I feel like I've sort of been punched in the stomach and I'm really just pulling in. Can you see it as the light? It has been the light not really pushing you in the stomach, but coming to you. Right. Well, I felt very jealous as well. Matthew and then Sovai were speaking. Um, not being there. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a belief in exclusion. Maybe it was maybe it was that at the beginning and I didn't I didn't see that. I just felt so you're saying to me so what did you say? <laughs> um this is can I see the light? Punished by the light. Punished by the light. Punched. You said Pun you felt punched in the stomach, oh, but I feel, it's the I light, like... and it's it's a, it can have a great impact. And yes, maybe it was that you saw a lot of things, and and it can feel overwhelming. But but trust it. You're ready. You're ready to see it and keep using the light. Keep allowing the light to let it wash. <laughs> Yeah. And I do, this, yeah, I do feel ready. Mm. I do feel ready, but I think that's part of it. I think I feel overwhelmed. Mm. It's like the stream of critical thoughts. I mean, particularly at myself, I would say. Maybe you need to journal about them, write them down mm. after the session. Release them that way. Mm. But you know, the self you judge is not you. Critical thoughts against yourself, you know, this <coughs> who you are. This is the self that is getting undone, it's getting seen. The false idea of you is getting seen. And... But when you said that, yeah, that, I, that, that was a bit of a shock when you said that. Just then, I actually just saw. Can't even remember what you said. Uh, just uh, the false idea of yourself. Yeah, it feels str this strong core to me. This false idea, and I don't even really know what it is. Exactly. Yeah. Because you can't know what it is. Because it's not real. Mm -hmm. This is talks about the time of disillusionment <laughs> that comes as you start to heal. Yeah, yeah that that kind of resonates. Mm. How shaky it is, like the boat, the symbol of a boat that has been upside down. And then when it turns right side, it really shakes. It really rocks. Oh. You know, and right. that rocking is, I would say, is where you're at. It's a disillusionment.
That, that, could, that feels true. Uh, be glad you're right side up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's still a, like a cynical part, mm. be honest. Um, well, I, don't hide behind the cynical part. No, I just yeah. have to hold that, just see it and just, yeah. I can feel that was an instant reaction. Yeah. The ego wants to keep hiding in different ways in judgments and the cynical is the judging. So the, yeah. you know, you can see it briefly and then, okay, just keep moving on, you know. That's, that's, yeah, it feels very helpful to be offered uh, the image of the light. Mm -hmm. It feels um, strange to some part of me. And yet I've been connecting with it on and off for quite a number of years, but now it feels I actually, what comes to me is that, like, no, I, I need to penetrate the denser darkness, something like that. And that, that feels frightening to me. I think. don't see it as a lonely journey. Just take the darkness and hand it to the light. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> may the force be with you the force is with you the force of light <laughs> well, that speaks to me <laughs> yeah that speaks to me yeah. thank you yeah you're there. i can't hear you yet julie you're still muted i was trying to find the raise hand button i can't oh. find it sorry okay. no worries <laughs> Yeah, there's like this funny idea that there's rules, <laughs> mm. that there's some rules in life and they shouldn't be broken or something. Um, and I, just, I only bring this up because I went swimming yesterday um, and there's a sign saying you shouldn't take your swimming costume off, like it's not okay to be naked in the swimming baths and you shouldn't do that. And there was a lady stood next to it in the shower and she had took her swimming costume off and she was like, stood next to the sign saying do not do this <laughs> and I could see how I wanted to get really upset because she wasn't following the rule <laughs> like <laughs> you know I wanted to get like uh, infuriated really that she wasn't following the rule and I wanted to go to the you know the management and say look this woman she's in the shower she's not following the rule <laughs> but I just let it go you know I let it go Hmm. Yeah, yeah. It was just for you. It happened just for you then. Yeah, and a bit like you said about yeah, and a bit like you said about the cat food. I I decided the other day that I didn't like fruit tea, so I <laughs> I was at a venue and I went to get a normal tea bag, and someone had put a fruit tea bag in the same bag, so the tea tasted of fruit tea anyway. <laughs> <laughs> It was like God saying to me, come on, it's a joke. You like fruit tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So many opportunities to release your Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. everything you get angry at, you make real. And then you have judged yourself. Yeah. And I, I also, something else was coming up this week about, you know, one person is somehow better than another. Mm. or you know I don't measure up and they might be better and the, the idea of authority I was really thinking about that word author authority what is that word mm. um you know could somebody take something that's mine is someone better <laughs> yeah good it's really good that you're allowing yourself to look and question these beliefs yeah. yeah it's old patterns mm, definitely mm. 
Do you want to share? Yes, I was going to say I drifted off literally from the space somehow. Um, I was going through something to do with something blocked in me. Um, and sometimes I spontaneously opened my eyes a couple of times and I thought it was all very still, but it was just my screen frozen. I didn't realize um, everything had froze, frozen. <laughs> and um, yeah, so interesting mm. journey. And then, oh, it's too late to rejoin anyway, don't bother. Um, and overcoming that pattern or of it, it's too late. And I thought, well, maybe I join again and see, see if I still need to be here for a bit. Um, it's like the astro astronaut, you know, going just, yeah. And then at some point the, the cord breaks, that sort of feeling. Mm. So it's good to be here. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. Good to see you here. My symbol, you went so deep and the world of form froze. <laughs> yeah. Became a screen. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you want to watch that movie with Sandra Bullock in the space. Gravity. Gravity. It's a powerful movie. Mm. Mm. Maybe I'll watch it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. It's been very precious to be with all of you today. Oh, enjoy, enjoy your day in inviting a future different from the past. Love you. <laughs> See you again soon. <laughs> <laughs>